All right, welcome to the Right Now Project. The Right Now Project is a podcast about finding and owning who we are. It's about learning to trust ourselves. Finally, it's about learning to trust our guts. It's about uncovering our authenticity and allowing who we are to soar. My name is Guy McPherson. I'm the founder here, and this is my journey too. If you're looking for something easy, this is not it. However, if you're ready to step up, ready to explore who you are, the ups and downs, the scars and scrapes, and realize the incredible value in that, this is your place. Let's get started. All right, welcome back to the Right Now Project. The question is, um, as I continue in this series on uh, my divorce, and... <laughs> Sorry, but every time I say that, it's crazy to me. I asked the question today, am I doing it right? Healing, getting, moving through this. Am I doing it right? Quote unquote, right? Am I, you know, you, you, you talk to people, you, uh, read things, you, you listen to people, people support you, um, in various ways they call you up you meet with them you have coffee and they um hit you up on facebook and they offer comments of support and you know you you listen and uh you share with people uh how you're feeling and people respond and react to that in a particular way um and you uh, listen to people who themselves have gone through this process, who've uh, been on either side, quote unquote, of the divorce process, i.e. they initiated it or they received, they were on the receiving end as uh, I am. And yes, it's painful for everyone involved. Uh, but when it comes out of the blue, and you don't expect it it's it's so crazy and you know i find myself hold on a second i gotta put on a sweater i'm cold one one sorry one second okay um you you know i find myself as i've expressed before with um some excitement you know, um, my, my, there seems like there are a lot of opportunities out there for, well, I can do anything. I mean, yes, I have two kids and my wife, my ex-wife, uh, and I will be splitting time. And even though I am scared about like being in this house alone, being in this apartment alone, um, you know, in two days she's moving out, uh, and at some point, you know, both kids are going to be there for an extended several days and I'm going to be alone. And I'm like, how the fuck am I going to, what am I going to do? What am I going to, how am I going to move forward? What am I, what's my life going to look like? What do I want it to look like is another question. Is there, you know, and then I start thinking about, well, I can travel, um, uh, you know, not, extensively at this point because I have kids. I mean, yes, I can make arrangements, but, you know, I'm thinking maybe I can take some day trips or, you know, uh, three or four day trips. I can pursue other things that I want. And it's funny because it, it, as soon as I have those thoughts, it's like this giant claw comes and reaches into those thoughts and pulls them back and says, well, not so fast, you know, reaches into this big claw, or move, drags that idea back and says, what do you, wait a minute, you can't do that. Isn't that crazy? Interesting. So what I'm finding is that I'm having to, I'm confronted with trusting my gut at every second. And and that's a great exercise for me because I need practice on doing that. But it's like this whole process, this whole experience of 
being in a divorce, of someone saying to you out of the blue, I have something to talk to you about. You're my best friend, you know, but I'm not in love with you anymore and I don't want to be in this marriage anymore and I'm having an emotional affair with someone. In that instant, everything changed. Our relationship changed. Our interactions changed. Obviously, our our uh, day-to-day banter changed at the level of <laughs> care we had for each other. Honestly, changed, of course. Yes, it did. And it's this experience threw up in front of me in that moment. <clears throat> excuse me, a mirror revealing to me, confronting me, challenging me in how I was going to react. How was I going to respond? How was I going to deal with this and manage this and move through this and work through this? And I have choice and all the choices there are laid out, right? What am I going to choose to do? How am I going to choose to respond? How much anger am I going to choose to hold on to? How much (laughs) um, frustration and angst and toxicity am I going to, you know, because all this time we've been living together for the last five months, giving her enough time to, to get ready to move out and she will be moving out in two days, two days. Uh, three days in three days, two more nights. And I find myself questioning myself or second guessing myself a lot here and thinking, wondering, you know, am, am, am I doing this right? Am I, and of course, right is in quotes. I realize it's going to be different for everybody, but for me, is this right? Is this, and Yes, I know, you know, you, you've got to trust your gut in all this stuff. And I think for me also, right, is it means healthy way. I'm not, you know, I'm not using drugs and I'm not using alcohol and trying to numb myself with all that crap. But this idea of identity, which I talked about on the previous episode, and who am I now? What am I now? And a better question for me is, what do I want to be? Who do I want to be? What do I want my life to look like? And these were some questions that my divorce coach had posed initially. And I was like, "What? I can't even think about those. What do you mean? What, what do I want my life to look like? I can't even think about that at that time. Well, now I can. I can start to think about that. And it's there is an excitement to it. You know, I started thinking about travel. Started thinking about uh, traveling with my my older child, who's thirteen, maybe over the summer. Um, and and traveling alone but this idea of you know it's a very different question like you know what do you want your life to look like that's that to me is a great question it's a perfect question because it invites one to really consider what they want their life to look like, who they want to be in the future, what do they want to be doing, and all those questions require a lot of thought and a lot of action, potentially, definitely, and that does get me excited, that really it does, and and it's also kind of scary too. Because, and this gets me back to the the, the, the the title here of this episode, which is, uh, 
you know, healing? Am I doing it right? I Am I going to make the right choice? Am I going to screw it up? Um, how do I know if I'm making the right choice? And I guess I don't, I'm not going to know, right? We don't, sometimes we just don't know, but we've got to follow our gut. Uh, where's our heart leading us? Where's our gut leading us without, you know, unencumbered without all the, the filters of, of the social societal filters. And yes, they are so hard to bat away and swat away and ignore, at least they are for me sometimes. And this is definitely one of those times. Hmm. Every morning, you know, I, I get up and I, I do feel that honestly, and I, I hate to admit this and I don't want to admit it, but I fucking, you know, I just got to shut up and, and speak my truth here. I feel like, you know, in a sense, she lay, she did this to me. That's kind of what, you know, she did this to me. And I know that's not a very healthy way to look at it. And it's kind of a negative way to look at, it, but, but in a sense, you know, bam, out of the blue, that's it. I'm getting a divorce. I want to get a divorce. I not in love with you anymore. Not attracted to you in that way anymore. And by the way, I'm having an emotional affair with someone. No, let's work on this. No, we got to talk about something. No, you know what? I'm not feeling it. Let's take a break. Nothing, nothing, none of that. So in a sense, there, there, and that to me feels like, and because of it, right? Because of that, boom, I'm going to be cut off from my kids for 50% of the time. You know, and, and some people are like, well, you know, it's, it's going to be liberating, blah, 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 blah. Well, I'm not there yet. You know, I, I, you know, I'm going to have time by myself. Yes, I can see how that's going to be cool and good. But to have someone do that to you, right? To have someone inflict that, impose that on you sucks. It hurts. And I know that. And I, and I, I don't cling to that. I, you know, feeling like she did this to me. She's doing this to me. You know, I, 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 that's kind of the toxicity part that I don't want to cling to, but it, it is there. Part of it is there. And I get up in the morning and it gets me fired up, right? It gets me fired up because I have to move. I have to live my life. You know, I'm not doing this now with a partner, I don't, I'm not moving through this life with, with someone now, you know, all the, all the plans we had done, all the places we were going to go done trips. We were going to take no mas, you know, and this whole pro, you know, I talked about that, that mirror being placed up there and I look at it like an invitation every single moment in this process of of dealing with this divorce, reacting to the divorce, this responding to this whole process and and moving through it in a trying in the most positive, healthy way I can. Each moment there's an invitation, there are choices laid out, and I have to choose how I'm gonna move through it what I'm going to use to make those choices. Who, who, if anyone, am I going to listen to? What, if anything, am I going to refer to a reference to make a good choice? You know, and I think I've realized that I've got to trust my God. I've got to honor my God. And that's what I'm going to do. All right. Have an awesome day. And thank you so much for listening.